So I just wanted to talk to you a little bit more this morning or start to talk to you about filled. And of course, uh, when you hear the word filled, I would dare to say, it's not on, the, on that screen, but I would dare to say that most of you, including me, because that's how I started out, we think about Acts chapter 2 and verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost because that's who we are. Isn't that right? We are people of the Spirit. Right? So the, the, so the number one thing when we talk about be, being filled is Acts chapter 2, being filled. They were all filled with the Spirit and began to speak right, with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And of course, if you are not filled with the Spirit according to this verse, according to this scripture, we want to pray with you uh, because we want to get you to that point because it's for every believer. Right, uh, you know, I just happened to talk to a Baptist lady. You know, we had a big uh, kit thing going on this last last week. We finished up on Friday night with Pastor Joel and Jamie, who, by the way, are doing. They'll do a session for the youth and for kids, not for the youth and kids, but for youth and kids uh, ministry. So, if you'd like to be involved. Uh, you know, or if you, you know, know of some people that want to be involved with youth and kids, you know, come to the session this afternoon at 1.30 with Pastor Joel and Jamie because they run an awesome youth ministry, an awesome children's church ministry, and they got some good principles, uh, you know, amen. I mean, just to, just to let you know, I'm just going to make myself real vulnerable here. <laughs> Yeah, some of you guys, they, you can vouch for it. And uh, as a matter of fact, you know, when we, you know, when Joel uh, came with me to Jamaica, I'm saying that that way because he was supposed to be on the soccer field. I made him on to go to the soccer field, but he said, no, I want to come with you on a mission trip to Jamaica. So he came on this mission trip to uh, Jamaica, and I saw Jamie, and I didn't just see her, but I saw all the things that she was doing with kids. I said, you know, we need that girl in our church. So, Joel, can you please marry her? And so he did. And, uh, <laughs> and that's how it all happened. <laughs> That's how we get our first... This is sound right, I know that, but that, that's, that, that's the truth. Amen. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, they have a session going on at 1.30. I thought I'll sneak that in really, really quick here. But, you know, even this past week, you know, there was this lady who came because of her child was in this program, and she is Baptist, and, you know, so, I, so she was really worried about us because, you know, we are... She found out from me that we are one of these tongue-talking churches. Can't lie about that, you know. <laughs> Because I could tell, are you, you know, she was afraid. Are you one of these tongue-talking churches? I said, I plead guilty. I said, yes, oh, okay. So then she lightened up a little bit and they said, well, what, what is it for? You know, because my understanding is it's just only for special people. I said, amen. <laughs> we're, we're very special. But, you know, but it is for whosoever will. You know, so we explained it a little bit to her, so it made a little bit more sense to her. But how many of you know there's a lot of people who are just scared of the supernatural, right? They're scared of tongues. They're scared of falling over. They're scared of this and they're scared of that. And so we want to make sure that at camp meeting, you let go of all those things, right? And give you an opportunity to get into something that you perhaps at one time were afraid about and just take the plunge, Right? If you've never ran before, praise God, this might be a great time Woo! for you to do some running. It's freeing. It really is. <laughs> Amen. If you've never danced in the Spirit, you know, I believe, uh, you know, you'll get the opportunity for some, a few DUIs, you know, or uh, drive or dancing under the influence. Praise the Lord. I'm sure that will happen this entire week or between now and Wednesday night. If you've never gave, you know, in, in a way that you ever noticed it, right? I, I believe that's generous giving, right? Have, have you ever thought about some of these words, you know, where Paul says, charge them which are, who are rich in this world? You know, I mean, I used to think, well, that's not me, right? So I, I would put that thing out of my mind, you know, or I would put it away. That's not me. See, some of those things you have to kind of decide in your own spirit, Right? Generous. What, what, what does that mean? Generous to one person may be a total different thing than somebody else. But I would say this, you know, if you're a generous person, you ought to be able to notice it. Right? In your giving. So maybe you have never given to a place or to a point, uh, you know, that you were, you know, that you went past the point of being comfortable. 
right? Uh, maybe you've always stuck with what you're comfortable with. But you know what? I found out this. If you are a generous giver, you will notice it. All right, but I also noticed this, you know, I mean, you will notice it even three months from, from, from now. You remember that, Lord? <laughs> you know, I, have, I planted some seed back then. And, uh, you know, I'm still thinking about it. I hope you are too. Well, he is, of course, thinking about it. You planted some seed, amen, and it is coming up, right? If you are a generous giver that way, it is going to come back to you in the same measure. Amen. And, uh, you know, we can talk from experience that when you do that, Praise God. Things happen in that realm. So here's a scripture for you. Uh, not necessarily Acts chapter 2 and verse 4, although we'll talk about that as well. But, you know, at camp meeting, especially at camp meeting, uh, I've, I, I want to do my utmost in these next few sessions, you know, to make myself extremely vulnerable. Like I want to talk to you uh, the way I normally would not talk to people, right? Maybe one-on-one -on -one to a few people, but... You know, not so much in a gr larger group of people, especially some people I don't even know. But I believe, you know, it would be helpful to you if I make myself vulnerable that way. Talking about being filled, you know, in some of those areas. You know, go, go further. You know, get rid of some fear. Consecrate yourself to a level that you have never done before. Right? I think if you, if we get involved in some of those things, you know, that, that you go to the next level in your consecration, in your running, in your dancing, in your giving, I believe that you'll be gone. We'll be gone. We'll all be gone. When you go, we're gone. When I go, you're gone. Right? To a, to a whole different level in the, in the realm of the Spirit. Now, here's a simple scripture found in um, Matthew chapter 5. And it reads in, in verse 6, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be what? Filled. They shall be filled. Now, I don't want to talk about righteousness at this moment. You know, that's a very important and very exciting topic. But I do want to talk about this principle that if you hunger and thirst for something, that you are going to be filled. Right? Jesus is using something that everybody knows, knows about. Now, I'm really glad he didn't say spiritual. If you hunger, you know, spiritually speaking. Right? I mean, we, we tend to make some things sometimes vague by adding the word spiritual to it. <laughs> right? Well, that's just spiritual hunger. Well, we're involved in spiritual warfare. You know, with other words, it's a little bit vague. You know, and let's leave it in that realm because then we don't really know what we're talking about. But it sounds <laughs> spiritual. Aren't you glad, pastors, that some of you people are not just, you know, spiritually giving? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. Or just spiritually show up? You know, I was there in the spirit, yeah. right? I was with you in the spirit. Uh-huh. <laughs> sounds nice. You know, I mean, they were, you know, I was on the golf course, but I was with you in spirit. <laughs> Right? People make, make those statements, and it sounds spiritual, but it really is, is not really at all. So, uh, let's get back to my scripture here. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. So when you hunger and thirst for something, you will be filled. Yes. When you hunger and thirst for something, you will be filled. I think it's pretty obvious that, you know, in your life, in my life, uh, it's, I think it's very obvious that what you hunger and thirst for, it will show up, right? If your hunger and thirst is for natural food, how many of you know, it probably will show up <laughs> at some point in time. It will probably sh show up. So just as much as you can have some of these signs following you when you are filled would it be also possible for some other things to follow you, some other signs following you, when you begun, begin to hunger and thirst after godly things? Here Jesus is talking about righteousness, but it could be some other things as well, right? If you ask the average person, what do you really want? Well, most people, uh, I would say, would answer something like, like this. Well, I just want what God wants. Right? I just want what God wants. And that's a, that's a good statement. You know, we certainly don't want what the devil wants. 
and we certainly don't want what we want necessarily. But even when you say, I just want what God wants, sometimes it's a bit vague. Can you say amen? It's a bit vague, you know, like, okay, what do you want in life? Well, I just want what, what God wants. That could really mean this, you know, that whatever happens in your life, you know, you just automatically think, well, that must be what God wants. You know, not really knowing this, that if you want something from God, you have to purposely go after it. Amen. It doesn't just fall on you. You can't just go through life and look back. Well, this happened and that happened. I went to this event and I married so-and-so. And I did this and I did that. And I went to visit so-and-so. I went to that country. So that must have been God's, God's will. Right? Because if you want to be involved in God's will, you have to purpose some things in your spirit. Can you say amen? You have to purpose some things in your spirit. And you have to go after it with everything in you and everything about you it doesn't just happen amen and uh one of the things for for instance i'll, I'll just tell you a quick story about in ingrid and me you know we were uh you know like right after i got saved let me talk about me you know ingrid have to, has to tell her side of the story <laughs> but let me let me let me just tell you you know shortly after i got saved you know i was healed as well you know some by some of brother hagan's teaching. I put it into practice and my healing didn't come instantly. But over a period of time, as I put the word into practice, it just came. Praise God. So we were really excited about, you know, the, the, the ministry by, by, by Brother Hagen about the word of faith. And so we uh, de decided, I was only, what, 20? Ingrid was, what, 12? No. <laughs> she was 17, actually. She was 17. So I must have been 21. Right? There's something like, like that. Ingrid was 17. I was 21. And we said, we are going to go to camp meeting. Right? See, that's the reason why we're doing a camp meeting now. Because that camp meeting changed me forever. Right? And I mean, and it's not that I necessarily came there to change. But if you saturate yourself with the word, if you soak yourself with the spirit, things happen. Amen. Yes. Things happen in your spirit that you're not even conscious of. Actually, I, like, I remember sitting there. All I could do is be overwhelmed by everything that was going on that was happening to me. I was over, overwhelmed by hearing, you know, Fred Price preach and somebody came up with a knife and wanted to kill him. <laughs> right? Yeah. I thought, whoa, that, I've never, never seen anybody get, get that mad about the word. So there must, be, there must be something here, right? So the whole experience was very an overwhelming experience, you know, so over, over, overwhelming that I thought, you know what, if I'm going to go to Bible school, it's going to be here. And I thought they might be quite excited about getting some uh, can Canadians, right? And I went to the Rama booth, and, um, <laughs> and I went there, and I said, you know what, uh, my, I couldn't say my wife, but my girlfriend and I, we went with another the couple, by the way, so you guys know this is all clean. <laughs> and so we went to the to the to the Rama booth. I just think this is a funny story. And uh, you know, so we went to the Rama booth and you know asked if you could get an application form. And they said, "Well, you're just really blessed because you know because the dean of the school, you know, Dean Moffat is right. They didn't say the dean of the school. Dean Moffat is right there. So I'm ignorant. I have no idea. I thought his first name was Dean, right? Not knowing that he was the dean of the school. So I walked up to him, shook hands with him. I said, "Hello, Dean." <laughs> he sized me up. He looked at me. You know, he sized me up. I'm, I could tell he has got x-ray vision. He checked out my backbone, you know. You know, if it was straight enough to come to Bible school, he looked at me and he basically said this. You know, I'm not quite sure if he said it like this, but this is what we heard. Why don't you do us a favor? You stay where you're at. We stay where we're at and we'll all be really happy. <laughs> so not the most uh, inviting or wel welcoming statement. So we went back to our seats. Uh, thinking, you know, well, I guess they don't want us. But I thought, well, no, no, you don't give up your joy, don't give up your hope, right? Because I believe, I believe that this will happen. And it did, you know, just a short few years later. And, uh, you know, we, I did mention it years later to him. He said, I said that. I said, you said that. <laughs> anyway, uh, there's another story with that. So, but when we went, go ahead. Oh, okay. See, my, my wife is of the color blue. Is there a mic for her so she can correct me? <laughs> Go ahead, babe. You have to fix this. No, you can fix it. 
I have no, no idea what I got to fix. <laughs> okay. That's why, that's why we're a team. I say things out there that I don't think are wrong well, at it, all. I just, I don't want Dean Moffat look, you oh. left him hanging there like you stay where you're, where you're at and we'll stay here because that's not, he's such a good man of God. He's a good man of God. And you know the reason why is because they had so many problems with illegal Canadians. Oh, and yeah. so then... Um, Canadians are really nice people. <laughs> but if, if they were in the country illegally, that was a big hassle for them. And some, I think someone even ended up in jail overnight. That's or, true. So that's why. That's Dean Moffat, true. I mean, we had him as a teacher. Yes, he was He's awesome. He's a good, upright man of God that I, we learned lots from. Yeah. So do you so, feel better now, Canadians? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Everybody feels better now. Okay, I'm glad you, you corrected it for me. Okay. She gets to clap. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I'm off track now because of those little details, you know, that come up. <laughs> Amen. What were we talking about? What was I talking about? Okay. So we were at, at camp meeting. And during this time, it was an overwhelming time. But, you know, after you, you process some of the things, you know, I made up my mind. You know, from this moment on, I am going to be a prayer. Right? I'm not just going to pray. I'm going to be a prayer, meaning you know, I'm going to saturate myself in, in prayer. I'm not going to join the choir because I had. I'm a brand new believer, brand new Christian. And when I'm saying I'm joining the choir, I'm not talking about an, an actual little choir. You know, I'm just joining. You know, I'm talking to you about a choir that was saying we should pray more. And I joined that choir by saying I should pray more. Have you ever said that? To yourself or to other people oh you know and then i everybody will quickly agree yeah we all should pray more yeah. all right so at that time i made i made up my mind i'm going to be a doer of the word actually Ingrid and i both you know we just made up our mind after that camp meeting we are going to be doers of the word and not hearers only we're going to do it you know when we see something in the word you know we are going to actually do it Right. And so that was the first thing that I noticed in my in my life that I'm kind of not really being honest with my with myself. I say that I should pray more, but I never actually do it. So what I did is I went to my pastor. I asked, you know, we had a smaller church. We were part of a smaller church, you know, and I asked him, can we can I, you know, get the keys to the church? Uh, so when I have some time off, I can just come and just pray. Oh, yeah, of course, he'd be very excited about that. You know, who, who wouldn't be? <laughs> so I, I got the keys, you know, from him. And many times right after work, you know, I was off at 4 o'clock. I'd go there for an hour, an hour and a half, and just pray. Just pray in tongues. Just pray in tongues. But the neat thing about that is, you know, when you hunger and thirst for something, and what I really was thirsting for, you know, what I heard at camp meeting, I just wanted it. Right? Like this word of faith which we preach, I just wanted that on the inside of me. You know, this Holy Ghost we're talking about that I experienced at the time. I didn't just want to, I didn't just want to be in a service where it happened. I want to be the cause of it. You know what I'm talking about? You know, I, I, I don't want the Lord to work in spite of me. <laughs> right? I don't want the Lord to, to, to work apart from me. You know, I, I want Him to work because of me. Right? And I think those are very good goals and good things to shoot for. Right? Whatever you're hungry, whatever you're hungry for, for, whatever you thirst for, you will be filled with. Amen? So if you hunger to become a prayer, guess what's going to happen? You will be filled with a spirit of prayer. You could, you, you, you could say it that way. And, you know, when you, when you do that, and, I, you know, I mean, at the time when I did it, I can honestly say I don't, can't really say that anything immediately changed other than the fact I got all these crazy thoughts coming in my head about, you know, going into the ministry, although I didn't know that already. But, you know, seeing th things that I'm going to do, right, I'm seeing things I'm going to go, seeing things I'm going to see say, seeing things, you know, with other nations, but I would throw them out and think, well, that's just, that's just me, right? That's just me. So I didn't really pay a whole lot of attention other than every once in a while thinking to myself, wouldn't that be nice? 
Wouldn't, wouldn't that be nice? See, what you're doing is, uh, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, you're speaking unto, unto God, but you are speaking mysteries. Right? When you're praying in tongues, and especially when you yield yourself, when you give yourself to it, you become filled with mysteries. As a matter of fact, you're praying them out for your own self. You are praying out your own future. Amen. And, you know, I have talked to, to, to so many people so many times, and they often wonder, what does God want, want, want me to do? And, you know, sometimes I have a little bit of an answer. But really, that is not really somebody else's job to find out. It's your job to find out what God want, want, wants you to do. And I, it seems to me that if you pray long, long enough at least... Like, don't just pray, but pray long enough till you hear from God. Because all of us, every single one of us, we've got the ability to hear from heaven. Amen. My sheep hear my voice. So with that, you know, if you, if you see it that way, if you, if you believe that my sheep hear, hear, more, hear my voice, then there's an avenue that God is able to reach you to talk to you about your future. Now, it doesn't come just in, just in a map, right? It doesn't come in bullets. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice, right? That's how we sometimes think. You know, we just Google something and we got the answer. You know, we just check something out and it's in bullet form. But it does come to you in desires, right? In a hope. It comes to you. It comes to me in just seeing things. And that's really normal. Right? It's just really normal for you to be able to think some things that you've never thought before, to see things you've never seen be before, and to start acting on some of those things that you do see and do hear in your own spirit. Praise the Lord. So one time, you know, because I'm, I'm wondering about this, like, is this really true? You know, is this just me coming up with all these thoughts? I'm thinking, well, I don't know, you know, if it's just me coming up. Like, I, I, I don't think I'm coming up with these thoughts. Is the Spirit of God on, on the inside of me but I wasn't totally sure until I noticed this one time I'm praying in this church you know that I was in, I was praise and worship leader and uh, you know so I would often stay after the service for a little bit longer and you know and again just pray I would say if, if everybody takes that serious <laughs> right if every church takes that serious you know we in our Canadian churches would be much further ahead Right, just just by just by praying, praying in the spirit, and so I remember walking through the church, and uh, just just praying in tongues, and I'm just going on, and uh, you know it got a little bit louder, a little bit bolder, you know how that goes, right? But all of a sudden, you know this I had never had an experience like this before, but all of a sudden I just you know it just came bursting out out of me like an explosive force, and you know I can't say that I was yelling. But I was speaking with a very authoritative voice, right? And I said, you foul spirit of death, I command you to come out of her in Jesus' name. And, it, you know, I mean, I'm saying it nice, but I really said it authoritative. I can't, I can't even do that without the spirit, right? I mean, I'd be just yelling, right? And it wouldn't sound good. I mean, you'd get all scared probably. <laughs> so, so I won't do that. You just got to... Got to trust me that I said it in a very authoritative voice that I'd never even used it because I'm nice, <laughs> right? So I had never done any, anything like that. And after I had said it, I was done. I thought, okay, I can, I, can go, I can go to Ingrid and have lunch. We were still dating at the time. So I can go to Ingrid's house and, and have lunch. And that's, that's exactly what I did, not really knowing what was coming of it. I, I, I was just done. Right. So but the interesting thing was at nighttime, you know, after I did what I'm supposed to do, lead praise and worship, you know, my pastor came up and, you know, right in the middle of his sermon, he stopped and he called, you know, he called a lady to come out, uh, out, out of the come out, come out of the seat and stand in front of him. And he, he, he laid hands on her and he said to her, you foul spirit of death, I command you to come out of her in Jesus name. I thought, I've been there. I've seen that, right? So it felt to me that I'm a part of what he is doing, right? As a matter of fact, I felt a little bit stronger. He's doing it because I prayed. <laughs> 
But it doesn't matter, you know, who, who, who gets the credit, right? As long as the Lord gets the credit. But I felt I had a very serious part in what was taking place. What I did not know, what only him and her knew, was that she had been diagnosed with cancer. I believe it was cancer in her, in her leg. And she was healed. She went back to the doctor and she was totally healed. Praise the Lord. Right? So I, had, I felt I had a huge part in that. Would you say so? I please do. <laughs> Amen. Just by, just by praying. And I thought to myself, okay, if I did that in, in the spirit, right, you have to test some things for yourself. You know, what are you doing? Are you doing something on your own? Is the Holy Ghost working with you? It's, got, it's all got to do with being filled, right? With you hungry, with you being hungry, you being thirsty for something. So what are, what are you really hungry for? What are you really thirsty for? Amen. I believe it would be really good for you to be able to define that in, in your life. If you're able to define that in your life, you could say you have now a strong desire. And I believe that's very strong, very important for, for your faith to tap into. Whatsoever things you what? Desire. When you pray, you, you what? Believe that you receive and you shall have. So if you don't have that really strong on the inside of you, then, you, then it's very easy for you to tap into somebody else's desire, you know, into somebody else's vision, into some, what somebody else is doing. I would say if you become filled with desire, you know, for what God wants you, you to do rather than just a need, right? I just... Man, I just see all these people out there, and they're so needy. I just see the church in such a need. You can come at it from that angle, and it doesn't really get you anywhere. It seems like God is not moved by, by needs, but He is moved by your desire. Right? So rather than just seeing a whole lot of people going to hell, <laughs> right? Even, even Jesus didn't, didn't see it that way. He saw, a, he saw a harvest, right? He saw the harvest is ripe. And it's ready to be reaped. You know, we need some laborers to get that thing in. Then it, everything changes. You don't just see a need, but now you see you have an intense desire and a drive on the inside of you just to get some things done. So I'm going to make myself a little bit vulnerable here over these next. I don't think I can pull it off within the next ten minutes. But talk a little bit about you know some of the stuff that really drive me. Right, that, that, that motivate me, that, are, that it's, it's strong on the inside of me. But I can, I, can, I can tell you this, you know, I'm interested in what God wants. But the question is, what does he want? What, what does God really want? And, you know, I, I can't say in this day and hour, you could say it that way. But what he really wants, he's been wanting for a long time. You know, ever since the church, his church started. If I listen to what Jesus is doing, Right? And if I become interested in what he is doing right now on the right hand of God the Father, what is Jesus doing? Is he playing ping pong with the Father? <laughs> <You know? laughs> what's, he, what's he doing up there? I mean, he has a job, right? He, he left his earthly ministry to us, and he has moved on to heaven to accomplish a more heavenly ministry. In order for, or, or a more excellent, I should say it this way, a more excellent ministry. It is a heavenly ministry. He operates from heaven. But what is he doing? What is he doing? I would say this. He is building a building. He's building the church. Right? He is building the church. So it has become my, my utmost desire, my utmost hope to work with him. On building a building. And I believe if we, take, if we take on that kind of an attitude. That you become a partner with him building. Right? That you, know, that, that, that you become a partner with him in building. Now I, I used to struggle. I don't want to say struggle. But you, know, you have questions. Because I used to say to the Lord. Yeah, well I'm interested in that. But I'm also interested in winning souls. But did you know. When you're winning souls. You're, you're helping that building being built. Right? Because every time when you win somebody to the Lord Jesus Christ, that becomes another brick, you could say, or another stone in that building. That's not only just saved, you know, from the mud and from all the junk and now becomes part of the building, but now needs to become an active member 
in that church as well. So that's what Jesus is doing. As a matter of fact, you know, he made this statement upon this rock. And we talk about what the rock is and that's fine and dandy. But I find it very interesting. You know, he said this. I will build my church. Upon this rock, I will build my church. So that's the first time. Right? That's the first time he ever talked about the church. And the first thing he said in him talking about the church is, he said this, I am building my church. So we know this, especially those who have been in Bible school, when something is mentioned for the first time, you better pay close attention to it because it lays the foundation for what is going to happen or for what you need to know about that topic. Right? So what do we know about the church? It is being built by the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? He is still building that building. Amen. So now if I become interested in what he is interested in, I think I will get his attention as well. Right? Because, you know, I mean, I, I don't know how, how you operate, but, you know, I don't know if you ever, ever, ever talk to people. And if, if they're not really interested in what you've got to say, it's very difficult to, to keep, the, keep the, the conversation going. Or if you're not interested in what they're interested in, it's very difficult. You're not on the same page. And I've, I have felt that at times, you know. I'm not really on the same page. I'm interested in some things. And there's certainly God. They think it's not like I want to rob a bank, you know. But I, I just want to really define what I, I, I need to know what God is interested in, what Jesus is interested in. Well, it's the same as David, right? See, there's something about David that I just love, Right? I mean, there's something about David that God absolutely loves because even though he did what he did, right? Adultery, right? And then hiding it and trying to get the guy, you know, to sleep with his wife and make it look like it's his kid. <laughs> That's what he did, right? And that didn't work because the guy was more honorable than David, right? He said, I'm, I'm not going to go out there. He said, I'm not going to go out there. You know, I'm, I'm not going to go sleep, sleep with, my, with my wife while my buddies are out there fighting. I'm not going to do that. That's what he said. So he's an honorable guy, more honorable than David was at the time. So David said, okay, if you don't want to work that way, let's, you know, pretend something else. You know, let's just get you back back in the front, in the front line. And he told his captain, when he gets there, we, you guys are just going to pull back a little bit. So that he's left by, by himself, the guy said. His captain said, well, you know what's going to happen? He's going to get killed. Well, you know, that's war. You know, some people live and some people die. That's what he said. It's pretty nasty, right? I mean, most of you, you know, if it wasn't David, you would throw a guy like that out pretty quick. Wouldn't you? I mean, you know, you'd be, you'd be done with that kind of a person, but not God. So what is it that really... That, that God really liked about him. Well, the Bible tells us that he was a man after God's heart. Right? He was a man after God's heart. And so I, I you know, I prayed about that. You know, what, what does that mean? He's a man after God's heart. He's a man after my own heart. You know, what that means is simply this. He was able to look into God's heart without God ever telling him what he really wanted. But he found out. What was in God's heart? And you know what he found in God's heart? God wanted a place that he can live in and dwell in and manifest himself in. So when he sat in his own palace, it just hit him one day. This is not right. That I live in a beautiful place and my God, you know, is still living in this tent. That's not right. And when he had these thoughts in him, God liked it so well. Because you know what? He knows what our thoughts are. So he sent the prophet Nathan to him. This time with a little bit better message. Not thou art the man. <laughs> but this time, it's, you know, this time it was more like, hey, David, you are the man. <laughs> because whatever you have in your heart, just go ahead and just do it. Just go ahead and just do it. And he told them, because you've got this in your heart. Because you've got this in your heart. You want to build a nice place for, for, for me? You know, you want to build a home or a house for me? I'm going to see to it that your house is going to be built for eternity. Whew. That's exciting. Right? You take care of God's things. You take, specifically, you take care of his house. He's going to take care of your house. 
And I'm not just talking about your physical dwelling place. He's going to take care of your family. Yes. Amen. Amen. So, uh, a long time ago, you know, England and I de decided, you know, we're not just, good. We, we don't live here. You know, we don't just live in Red Deer just to raise a family. Right? I mean, that's part of the job. But, you know, that there's a higher purpose in it. We're here to build the church. Amen. We're here to, to build the church. And whatever it takes to build the church, whether it takes preaching, whether it takes teaching, whether it takes giving, whether it takes running, whether it takes shouting, whatever it takes, I'm in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> whatever it takes, we're in. Can you say amen? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Let's, let's all stand. I didn't get very far with this, but I believe you know where I'm going with this. And tomorrow we'll pick it up a little bit more. Let's just... Raise our hands, Father God. Just begin to praise Him. Amen. He dwells. Amen. He dwells in the praises of His people. Father God, we appreciate You. We love You with all of our hearts. Hallelujah. Everything in us, everything about us, everything that we call dear, everything is totally Yours. We give it to You. All the material things, all of our money, hallelujah, all of our vehicles, everything about us we don't hold anything back but we commit everything freely and wholeheartedly to you we consecrate ourselves for your work for your assignment which is to build the church and we thank you that we live in days that we are working with you in order to accomplish a task that for the natural mind might be incomprehensible and unattainable and impossible but because we are dealing with the most high God and with something that you are so interested in we know that we as the body of Christ in this nation we're gonna pull it off in Jesus name come on give the Lord a shout we thank you we praise you we thank you and we praise you in Jesus precious name Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So I, I invite you to take a quick break. You know, I know you're social people. So, you know, but make it only like 10 minutes or so. You make it 10 minutes. We're back right here at 11 o'clock. And at that time, I want to, you know, in, introduce to you, uh, you know, two gentlemen from Quebec, right, by the name of Brian Berg. And uh, although he's from North Dakota, actually, North Dakota, Quebec, kind of similar <laughs> but you know he's he is married to Susie many of you know who Susie is and uh, then we've got Louie he looks a uh, you know pretty decent actually this morning did you get your did you get your luggage this morning. oh this luggage praise the Lord that's exciting amen so we'll hear more from Louie and Brian this morning you know as one of the projects that we want to uh, you know get you involved with amen God bless you and see you in 10